When I spend time on Capitol Hill, it's usually to report about the latest political crisis or some hot issue up there. But this week, I was in the Russell Senate office, Russell Senate office building for a very different reason. Last month, Oklahoma Senator Jim Inhofe faced an unspeakable tragedy. His son, Perry, just 52 years old, died in a plane crash. Senator Inhofe hasn't spoken publicly about it until now. As he prepares to gather with family for the holidays, he wanted to share his story. For Senator Jim Inhofe, politics is his life, but flying is his passion. He got his pilot license as a young man, and around Oklahoma, he is known to fly himself to campaign events. That skill, he says, got him into the U.S. Senate. Back in 1994, I was running in a race. I was 32 points behind, but I was everywhere. I mean, I had to get in the, one of my planes, and, and uh, I could be from the Panhandle down to southeastern Oklahoma in a matter of two hours, and it takes somebody out. It took my opponent uh, about seven hours to do the same thing. A love passed down to his two sons, Perry and Jimmy, who every year make the trip with their father to the famed Oshkosh Air Show. But last month, a family tradition turned tragic. Perry Inhofe crashed while flying a twin-engine plane outside Tulsa. He was one day short of his 52nd birthday. On final approach into Tulsa International Airport, uh, runway 18 left, uh, he was, uh, we don't know certain things. An engine was down, but the last communication was garbled, so we don't know whether he shut it down or it shut down. Uh, and that would make a difference in exactly what happened. But uh, he knew that he was going down. He avoided uh, any of the areas with houses and were people and went into a wooded area. That's Perry. He had a lot of training, just like you. He had a lot more training than me. I mean, uh, my other son and I are uh, not quite as meticulous as Perry has always been about, you know, flying by the numbers, doing everything right. He was 100 percent. I have young kids. I've got an 11 year old and eight year old twins. And I think like any parent, you know, you 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 worry about them hurting themselves or God forbid uh, them losing their lives. Um, and Perry is a grown man with a family of his own, but you have to be thinking like a young father, too, about this is your boy. How are you doing with that? It's, uh, it's something that you don't understand until it happens. I can remember so many friends of mine who've lost their kids, and, and, and you, like, you don't know what to say. You, say you, know, you can't say, I know how you feel, because you don't know. Uh, now I know. And I have no doubt that Perry and I are going to be together again. You have a strong faith. Well, it's not just strong faith. And this, this is, it goes beyond just getting back as far as Jesus. You, you know, um, some of the listeners out there might want to look up uh, 2 Samuel 12, 23, 900 years before Jesus. This same thing happened to David. And he said, oh, yes, of course, he won't be uh, coming here, but I'll be going back and we'll be together. It, this is, and I have no doubt about that. And that gives you enormous comfort? It does. It does. It, it makes me kind of look forward to it. We hear so much about Washington losing its way in terms of personal relations, in terms of an ability for relationships to be forged, to actually get work done and to compromise. But when you go through this kind of personal loss, you recognize that you've got some support around you. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, I seem to have gotten more or at least as many, maybe more, of uh, oh, communications from some of my Democrat friends, and I'm a pretty partisan Republican. And so uh, something like this happens, and all of a sudden the old barriers that were there, the old differences, those things that keep us apart, just disappear. Because it's not just a recognition that I know how much more important that is, but they do too. And they look out and they, they, they realize that you've, you've lost someone. And that brings, brings us closer together. Even your relationship with Majority Leader Harry Reid, right? Yeah, because, well, Harry, we, we have been, I know we just disagree on all this stuff, this political stuff, but you, you don't change uh, in terms of your positions and what you believe in, but you change in your uh, understanding of, of individuals. Is there some perspective that you gain from this kind of loss, this kind of hurt? that makes you think about the approach to your work here in Washington? Do you think some of what you feel changing around people comforting you through loss is something you can bring to your work? 
Well, it, it is, except the, the differences are still there. I mean, right now, the last bill of this session is my bill, it's the National Defense Authorization Act. There are people I serve with who don't really think you need a strong military. And, and so those defined differences, are they don't change. But your attitude changes. And you, and I can't help but think when I'm confronting someone on something in which we disagree, that I know what they, uh, uh, how they responded to my loss. And as a, as a grieving father, what's your biggest challenge as you look ahead to the next year? You know, when you have, as I described our family as uh, 20 kids and grandkids counting spouses, y you miss one and it's not whole anymore. And so that's, uh, uh, that's still, it'll probably always be a difficult thing to, to, to face up to, and it's, it's a reality. And you think about those things that Perry did that nobody else does, and that's the thing that, uh, you know, that uh, will be missed.